Hi guys, it's Jaden. Welcome back to my channel. Many of you guys have been asking me about uh, food, what I ate during my adrenal fatigue caused health crash recovery journey, which I also dealt with anxiety disorder, uh, panic attacks, and lots of stuff. If you haven't checked out my other videos and playlists on that topic, um, if you're interested, uh, and if you're going through the same thing, um, trying to figure out your symptoms, uh, you can definitely check out my playlists and videos. I put out a lot of information on that. So happy to say it, I am fully recovered now for over a year and I'm doing extremely well in that sense. So um, there's definitely light in the end of the tunnel if, if I, what you're going through is what I went through. Uh, so more specific on food, uh, I've decided I'm going to do another five part series. I will go through each phase and what I ate, what worked and what didn't work for me. Starting in this video, I will do phase one, which is you just had your initial crash. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the phases, I came up with the concept of five different phases for my health crash recovery. And uh, there's a whole playlist on it on my uh, channel as well. Check that out. Okay, before we get into it, as usual, I'm not a medical doctor, so please consult with your medical professional before taking on any health advice. Uh, I'm just sharing my experience in, for your own research and your information. Okay, so phase one, um, let me just go through the nose, okay? Like, let's just go through all the nose first. Uh, number one, no caffeine. Like this is matcha, it has caffeine. Coffee obviously has caffeine. Um, Coca-Cola, if you drink that, you know, there's a lot of things that have caffeine in it. You might want to read all your labels. Certain things you might not know that has caffeine, but it does. And when I say no caffeine, I mean like zero. Like not even a little bit, not decaf, because decaf still has a little caffeine in it, for those of you that don't know. Um, phase one, you just had your like massive event of a health crash, whether that be panic attack, major symptoms, um, major fatigue caused by hormonal imbalance due to chronic stress for a long time. Um, adrenal fatigue is a common condition with it. Um, it can manifest into anxiety disorders, panic attacks, um, all kinds of stuff. Blood sugar, like unable to regulate your blood sugar, but you don't have diabetes. Uh, lots and lots and lots of different symptoms a lot of them are pretty scary so it also can cause you to have health anxiety which is kind of like hypochondriac um about health conditions so and i dealt with that okay so definitely no caffeine because the caffeine is going to amp up your adrenaline and your stress metabolism and that is just going to add to your troubles okay no caffeine Okay, number two, no, like, huge amount of refined sugar. Okay, if you have, like, a tiny spoon to go with tea or something like that, like, of sugar, I recommend you go organic and high quality, nevertheless. But, yeah, a little bit of sugar to sweeten something, I wouldn't say no, unless you yourself feel like you're extra sensitive to it. But, not, like, if you dumped five tablespoons, that would be a problem, okay? Um, with adrenal fatigue, because your cortisol is out of whack, um, that plays into your blood sugar regulation. So, you are going to be very sensitive to, and those of you who go through and know this, like, just you're super sensitive to blood sugar. You have it spiked and then dropped, like, all day long, all the time especially after you eat um, and because it's cortisol related you'll also sometimes get these um, adrenaline rushes because your your body's like already depleted with the cortisol and it's imbalanced in your adrenals so when it produces whatever hormones it needs to produce to balance out your blood sugar or lift you out of low blood sugar it's producing more adrenaline as well than what it should be. So then you're getting all this adrenaline rush symptoms, heart palpitations, jittery, shaking, all that. Like generally generally around the time that you eat. Uh, totally went through this, especially phase one. Man, phase one, two are the worst, okay? So many symptoms and so much hardship during phase one and two. Um, 
and again, each phase lasted for me between four to six months, depending on the person. You you can go through a shorter, not really that much shorter from what I've experienced and what all the people I've talked to. And there's people who can go through it for a long, long time, like years and years. Um, took me around two years, but you know, it can take people like five years. I know one person has dealt with it for 10 years. But she did eventually um, recover fully. Okay, so the next no, okay, so no caffeine, no um, a large dose of refined sugar. So fruit was fine for me. Um, I wouldn't just, like I didn't go nuts, or pun not intended. Um, you know, I didn't just eat so many like fruits or something like that, but you know, an apple, an apple, like that was fine for me. Again, you're you, you got to figure things out because all our bodies are different chemically. You might react to certain things different than I do. So definitely check that out. Um, investigate yourself, research yourself, talk to your doctors, talk to your nutritionist. Uh, next is don't uh, oh, and just another note on the sugar, obviously, like desserts, no desserts, uh, no high sugary desserts. All right, next is do not starve yourself in any way, like don't go hungry and do not overstuff yourself when you eat, okay? Being super full is a stress, okay? And trying to recover from this, especially in phase one, if you experience just the smallest amount of stress you're going to fall it's like you feel like you're going to fall over your body can't handle stress especially in the first two phases it's really horrible you will gradually recover and then as you move into you know like late phase two phase three you start to be able to like handle a little bit but in the beginning you are so fragile like i remember opening like i think it was like whether the freezer or the refrigerator I opened the freezer door and this like just this cold air blew on me and I would that was like too much stress for me at the time. It's like your system in your body that handles stress is so weak and so imbalanced and fragile that you just cannot handle any type of stress, emotional stress, anything, physical, mental, like you just so food if you overeat that's a stress, guys. That's a major stress load. If you got to digest like over amount of food in your stomach, that is going to cause you stress. Um, same thing with not eating for too long. Starvation is like probably your body's number one stress. Like it thinks it's going to die. So when you're in this fight or flight caused by hormonal imbalance, anxiety, adrenal fatigue, Trust me, the signal from your body of saying that you might die from starvation is going to magnify. So do not go hungry, guys. Do not go on diets. And that leads to the next no. Don't cut out a macronutrient. Okay? This is me speaking from my experience and my take on this. You can obviously do whatever you want. I am not a doctor. But, you know, this is very debatable even in my own facebook group and if you haven't joined you want to check that out um it's in the description box uh, lots of information more information written down in there and there's a lot of people in there um, sharing good stuff uh so uh yes do not diet do not cut out a major macronutrient group if you don't know what that what i mean by that macronutrients are fats proteins and carbohydrates Okay, so there's diets like keto that cuts out carbs. There's Atkins that cuts out carbs. There's like, you know, veganism that cuts out the animal protein part of it. And I just don't recommend any of that. Even vegetarian, like even not eating meat. Okay, I've done that throughout my life and I respect that. And I think at times there's a time and a place for that. During this, it just does not work. Okay, I, I'm almost just guaranteeing you. Uh, again, make your own choices. But that is definitely from my insight. I 
even went through a time where I thought I'd try to do vegan again because you know I was raised with no meat and um, I decided to eat more and more of it as I got older and you know I feel great on it um, but during the health crash recovery I there was a period where I thought oh maybe I'll just try vegan it's clean it might relieve stress from it no it didn't like your body needs some form of complete animal protein for some reason you know so under the microscope, protein is protein. You can get it from plants and animals. It breaks down the same. However, they break out. They all break down into amino acids, right? But for some reason, when I went strict vegan on this, I set myself back so hard. So, no diets, and I and and you know carnivore diet. Like I, if you just cut out all fruits and vegetables, carbohydrates, and just eat protein on this, it's not going to work either. Um, Balance, guys. All about balance here. Uh, so yeah, do not cut out a macronutrient group. Don't go on a low-fat diet right now. It just it's not going to work. Eat a balance. I'm not going to dissect like the ratios, and I'm not asking you to get out a calculator and count your macronutrients and all that because that is stress in itself. So um, don't do that. But be mindful. Like every meal, eat moderate amount and eat a balanced proportion of fat, protein, and carbs. Uh, let's see, some of the more no's. Oh, um, two, like, super cold foods and super hot foods, temperature-wise. I don't mean spicy. And spicy, too. Anything that just shocks your system. Too cold is going to shock your system. Too hot is going to shock your system. Um, like, in the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, bone broth. Um, and excuse me, nutrition wise, bone broth is great for this. But I had it too hot. Because I thought, oh, you know, hot soup, it's gonna calm me down. Well, too hot is not good. Just like um, too much ice drinks, then I could not drink this then. Um, this is like a double no. It's like back then it's like iced and it's got like massive caffeine from the matcha. So uh no extremes guys so yeah so no like extreme temperatures like super cold or super hot or um flavors like don't over salt your food but don't not salt your food because you do need the salt for the adrenals but again too much salt is not good either um you might hold water that causes stress on your system bam you might get a setback uh let's see yeah, overly spicy foods, uh, you might be more sensitive sensitive to spices now that you're going through this because your digestion is probably run down by the overall stress load from this type of imbalance. So um, if you eat too spicy, it might cause you to have digestion issues, you know, number two issues, and that's just, again, cause more stress. You don't want stress. So moderation, mallow, balance like that is and chill that is like chill like relax this is some of the most basic parts of this but they're so important so and they definitely apply in the diet and the food for this type of recovery okay so some stuff that uh is good for you to eat um oh for me, at the first two phases, like phase one, two, I still couldn't eat refined carbohydrates yet. So no white breads, pastas, rice. Um, potatoes were okay. I didn't, I didn't feel like I couldn't eat the potatoes. Sweet potatoes were definitely great. Again, everybody's different. I've heard people that say sweet potatoes makes them makes their blood sugar go too high. Some people are great with it, like myself. So uh, a lot of just complex carbohydrates that releases the glucose slower into your system and eat it with tons of vegetables. Cooking methods are really important. Okay, so definitely no fried stuff. Those are harsh on your digestion. Again, when your digestion is taxed, you are going to be stressed and you're not gonna recover, at least not as well um, or as fast. Uh, so no like heavy frying stuff, no, um, uh, 
I would stick to like boil, steam, you know, salads, and uh, like water saute, and then put the oil on after you saute your vegetables or your protein or what, whatever. Uh, bone broths were very good. Okay, so like stews made from like really good organic bone broth, very, very good for me. Um, things like ginger were very good. Things like, um, like really fresh herbs in soups were very good for me then. Um, again, complex carbohydrates like sweet potatoes, uh, certain squashes, I ate a lot of that. Lentils were awesome at this time in the place of like, you know, rice if you eat rice or pasta. So I would eat like lentils instead of pasta and I would eat like chickpeas uh, for the carbohydrates because they just, they just break, it breaks down your body slower. So you don't get this like hit of sugar and then you can't regulate it. Um, with the salads, in phase one, it's great to eat salads, but kind of watch it too because it, it's, although, you know, raw vegetables, you really need it and it's really great for your digestion and everything. Too much of it because your digestion is run down, you can, it can cause you to like bloat or like you're just like can't digest it as well. Now that is on us. That is our system being imbalanced. So, because you should really should be able to digest like fresh raw vegetables. So good for you. But because we're going through this, and if you're going through this now, you need to realize that like your digestions might be taxed because your just overall system is, is taxed. And that might cause you to not be able to digest certain vegetables or just vegetables, raw vegetables in general as well. And that might, again, cause you stress. So, you know, trial and error, figure it out for yourself. Uh, that's very important. Um, and you don't have to like do, you know, s small meals like a thousand times a day or something like that. You can just simplify it by slowing down your eating and do not stuff yourself. Just eat until you're like satisfied. Stop. Give yourself some room. Don't ever feel full because that is already too late. Like you're going to feel the symptoms coming up if you get too full. So just eat until you're satisfied. Stop. And don't eat until you're hungry. Don't preset how many meals you're going to eat because all that is stress, guys. And all that is the stuff that doesn't work anymore. And those are the tools that has caused you to have this. So chill out. Eat when you're hungry. And just don't eat till you're stuffed. So simple, guys. Um, as far as that goes. It's like people make it so complicated with all these diets and all this like extra stuff. It makes it like you can't even recover. Like you're just even more stressed out about the solution. So I like to keep it simple like that. Um, and some people re react bad to dairy. I don't. So, I mean, it's not like I drink tons of cow milk and eat overly amount of cheese, but I didn't have a ma major reaction to it. Uh, some people might though, because it, again, it goes with, you know, you might not digest it well, so it's going to cause you like stress on your system. Uh, I drink lots of teas, obviously no caffeine, like herbal teas, like I make it myself. Um, you can check out my ginger brew, ginger tonic for the gut. Um, you know, I drank warm liquids a lot and I think that's about it for phase one. Um, I hope this helps you and answers some of your questions. A lot of you guys have been asking me, so I am putting out this video. The next video in this series will be um, the food and my insights on food and diet in phase two of the health crash recovery um, from adrenal fatigue and chronic stress. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please help me continue to build my community by subscribing. Hit the bell button. Like and share my content if you like it and you think somebody might benefit from my videos. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.